The test article is a 27 and a half foot diameter, 20 foot tall, aluminum lithium orthogrid cylinder, uh, very similar to the types of cylinders that were flying on the Space Shuttle external tank. Um, in fact, this test article is derived from some uh, excess uh, hardware from the Space Shuttle program. So it's configured very much like uh, the, the future SLS uh, core stage tank structures, so it's very relevant to what NASA is designing today. In this test, we're going to be uh, trying to simulate a lot of the same types of loads that, that a launch vehicle would be subjected to during flight. That includes internal pressure associated with the, uh, the fuel tanks, as well as flight loads that, that you would see, and that would include uh, compression type forces and, and bending forces, uh, similar to what would happen if you crushed a, a beverage can under your foot. The black and white uh, polka dot pattern you see on the outside of the test article is used in a system called digital image correlation. And uh, what that system does is we have a, a series of uh, 22 cameras uh, surrounding this test article and it's monitoring during the test minute movements of these dots and from that calculating uh, the displacements of the test article. And it's a really powerful uh, type of uh, technique that allows us to watch displacements of the test article during the test on the entire structure because traditionally we would only get point measurements, a single gauge here, a single gauge there. For something this large, um, the digital image correlation system really, really gives us a lot of good information. The NESC, NASA's Engineering and Safety Center, is the primary sponsor and funder of this uh, project. They saw very early on uh, the need to update these design guidelines and uh, I came to them with a proposal uh, to, to form this project and uh, so they've been the primary funder. The, the primary stakeholders would be uh, people like SLS um, as well as commercial crew um, and then industry at large. We have a large following of, of um, industry partners that come to workshops and we discuss a lot of the data and uh, discuss their needs as an industry. Um, so this project I think is going to have a large impact uh, in the long term, not just NASA and SLS. Well, we had several visual cues of this thing buckling. Uh, we look at data to see that it's buckled. We have our digital image correlation uh, data that's streaming real time for us that indicated even before buckling was occurring that the buckling was uh, anticipated. Um, but we can also view the test article outside of our uh, control room window and we have it positioned in such a way that we can see uh, it buckling at the time. And uh, so it was quite dramatic. We could see it buckle, we heard the bang. The shell buckling test has been conducted at Marshall Space Flight Center because inside of our load test annex, we've got one of the largest tensile test machines in the world. We've got a movable crosshead that weighs 3 million pounds and can react 30 million pounds of axial compression, making it perfect to do large scale structural tests. It's an indoor facility, which makes it ideal for the video image correlation systems that we use to monitor real time strain distributions during actual load, load events. The Space Launch System consists of five major components, the forge skirt, the liquid oxygen tank, the hydrogen tank, the inner tank, and the engine section. I'm going to be the lead test engineer for the forge skirt and the liquid oxygen tank. One of the biggest examples of how this directly affects the, the Space Launch System is we're, we're learning on real, real hardware that's the same size as, for example, the forge skirt. A matter of fact, the Shell Buckland test article is the same diameter as the forge skirt, and it's a little bit taller. So we've got a real life Eight, test article that, that, that we're practicing on, we're learning, and we're helping Two, provide good data to the NESC. And lift off.